Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay and welcome to Canary Wharf in London. Now, are you doing the London Marathon on Sunday? I'm not this year, but I did last year and the GPS around here was absolutely terrible. So I thought this year, with the new Garmin 955 with the multiband GPS, I thought I'll see if it's any better than the what I used last year, which is the blue one there, the Garmin 945 connected to a stride, so I can compare the pace from like a foot pod to the GPS. So I've posted a two mile route through here, and I've also got a session sort of threshold pace. So once I get myself reacquainted to where I am, we'll do that session, and it'll be sort of similar to marathon pace ish, about seven minute miling, something like that. And we'll see how these GPS plots do and what my pace says as I go through them. Because I think last year I got like a 617 mile through here, which is clearly not since because the average pace was about seven minutes. Okay, so this rather illustrates the scale of the problem. So the red line here is the actual route through Canary Wharf. This is about 17 and a half miles into the course. This is Lime Harbour that you come up here and do a left. So this is last year's trace from the Garmin 945 in Baloo. It's not doing too bad there on Marsh Wall, but as soon as we turn right there on Bank Street in towards Canary Wharf and you see it like goes all over the place and when we get into here which is a bit under cover you can see that it's almost impossible to even tell where I went I had to sort of go and consult the maps to work out what the actual route should be and the red line here and the blue line sort of almost completely disjointed and it finally sort of they match up again when we actually get back under sort of normal conditions shall we say away from all the tall buildings around here by Trafalgar Way and we're on my way again about 19 and a half miles so I did a run it from here at sort of marathon paced with the three watches to see how I fared Okay, we're at the junction with Marsh Wall and Lime Harbour, which is on the course. You come from back down there on Lime Harbour, turn left here, heading towards Canary Wharf. So I'm going to do a loop round there, sort of a, sort of my threshold effort, see if we can uh, get some good GPS data and stride data and I'll look at it later on. Okay, so we've now overlaid in pink here the actual 955 track that I got. I did about just under seven minute miling. It was quite hard work actually. But you can see, although it's not perfect, it's miles better than the 945 was last year. On Marsh Wall here, it's hugging the, the road pretty well. And then as it gets near the West India Dock here and then you turn onto Bank Street, it's still fairly open here. Though you get quite a lot of big hotels either side. But it gets really quite tight when you come into canary wharf here and on that bank street you've got basically two lanes so you seem to sort of hug the inside i'll overlay some pictures of my run around it and this is the really tricky bit so it's really tall buildings both sides and as you go down south colonnade here it's all sort of partially undercover and you turn a right there on, on cabo square and then come back parallel and it's also partially undercover so you can see like the pink line here it's actually reasonably uh, good and if anything you kind of think well at least you can see where you went so before looking the pace in more detail let's have a quick look at the actual gps of the three watches that we did so it's quite hard to see here that but the purple line is the 955 the brown line is the 945 and the blue line there is the 945 lte and it's a bit of a mess, but you can see that the 955 does way better than the other two. So Marsh Wall here, it's actually hugging the road reasonably well, coming into Bank Street, up Upper Bank Street, South Colonnade, round Cabo Square, it gets a bit wonky, and then North Colonnade here and out along this road here. Trafalgar Way it does not too bad but you can see that the other two just all over the place just miles off the road and then what's going on here is sort of like a land in the middle of the water so yeah it's just pretty hopeless so definitely the 955 is just miles better than the other two here for sure so here in this graph I've got the distance accumulation of the three devices I've got the 955 in purple just coming from multiband GPS we've got the 945 in brown attached to the stride the stride it was taking distance and speed from it I had it at 102.5 calibration which I found is the best for me it may differ for someone else and then the blue line here is the 945 LTE also from GPS now it's quite interesting that distance accumulation and the scale of this graph if we look at the end here the actual stride and the GPS for the 955 are pretty much exactly the same so even though it's a really challenging area for GPS the stride distance and the GPS distance are the same so on that sort of takeaway you'd say well I don't really need a stride because the distance although the GPS plot is a bit wonky isn't too bad if we look at the speed graph here and I'll change it over to pace it's perhaps a bit easier to uh, see you can see this must be on marsh wall where I was going reasonable in fact all the devices there even though they were a bit wonky weren't doing too bad for the first three minutes 
and then things get a bit more mixed up but I think it's what's interesting with the stride is that you expect to see a perfectly sort of flat graph but that's never really the case and there were a few spikes here admittedly from the GPS but I did also have a few times where I actually had to sort of pause to for traffic lights or just to get round people so in that sense even though there's a few spikes here it's not really the end of the world and I think in a race I'd never take instantaneous pace in a marathon because that's going to chop and change even if you're looking at your stride every five seconds you keep seeing a different pace anyway so I always think in a marathon or any sort of distance race lap pace my speed over, a, over over the last mile or whatever or kilometers if you put is just far more interesting so here's the actual 955 on Strava just to isolate it out a bit and you can see here on this red line how it was a reasonably accurate trace I mean yeah there's a bit of wobble but I mean I think you would accept that far better than the 945 one last year that I showed you and it's interesting here with the pace I was, try, I was trying to sort of run just a bit under seven minute miling around about sub three marathon pace and I got a 647 and a 654 so on lap pace you kind of think well that's not too bad at all although the actual instantaneous speed was a bit wonky but the kind of things like you feel like kind of things work themselves out and you know my speed there wasn't really ridiculously stupid and you could certainly use that to sort of take pace from it. And I measure this course to be pretty much exactly two miles. And it's actually come up at 2.06. So even though it's a bit wonky, it's not miles out. And this is by far the most difficult part of the whole course. But most of the rest of it is actually pretty good. So in that respect, again, I think it's doing pretty well here. And don't forget the stride distance came up exactly the same. So yeah by the time you've sort of taken out different quarters and stuff then again it's not really going to be much out from reality i also then having run to this point i also then ran back sort of basically the reverse at a similar speed and here we can see that the purple line is the 955 gps plot and the blue line is the 945 and again the 955 is so much better this is sort of fairly open here on this trafalgar way bit and so both of the devices are tuned pretty well. But as soon as we actually get starting to get undercover through near Canary Wharf, we're actually running along North Colonnade here, back reverse around, around the course. You can see that the purple line for the 955 is reasonably close to the actual road, but the 945 has just gone wherever. It's like miles off. And it's actually on that road here, Cabo Square. It's actually got that pretty much right. South Colonnade, a bit wonky, but it's basically undercover here. And then we turn right into Upper Bank Street, Bank Street, and then back down Marsh Wall. And you can definitely see where you went, whereas the 945 is just sort of like gone completely mad and think that it's gone for a complete swim. Now, if we look at the distance accumulation and the pace grass for the two, now you, you would definitely say that when on the open bit here, that the stride and the 955 are doing pretty well. So it's interesting actually when you're sort of open the, in the open air how much smoother the pace is from the 955 compared to the stride. So all this talk about the stride being sort of like better responsiveness. Well if you're in a steady state marathon you kind of think well actually I'd far rather to see a steady state pace here which is the purple line and this blue line which is quite wavy because if you looked at that every 10 seconds or every five seconds you would see a very different picture of your actual pace and it continues to do pretty well just to get gets a bit wonky you have to say the 955 so you think well in the very worst conditions where you're basically running undercover then yeah for sure the stride is better but i think you have to accept that if i, I very rarely run in these conditions and if you only need a stride for you know half a mile once a year then perhaps it's a bit of a waste of time distance accumulation is looking pretty good again just a bit of a difference here at the end but again, I think you would have to accept if it's the worst part of the course, then you know you get away with that and it's just so much better than it was last time. Now, it's not always absolutely great. I did another run here, sort of like as a bit of a warm down from Marsh Wall here. And then we're turning right into Bank Street. It's still fairly open there. As it gets towards Canary Wharf, it starts to go slightly off drift. But we, it's picking up the course reasonably well here. But down South Colonnade, it's doing okay. Then we do this right turn on Cabo Street and then right again. And then meant to be down North Colonnade. Now it goes a bit wonky. It's actually sort of like coming cutting right across the buildings. So I actually managed to finish there, that little spot there. And it's put it down here. So, yeah. So you have to say that, well, sometimes it doesn't get it quite right but still think it's way better than the 945 was last time and I think this bit here is basically undercover so yeah maybe it's not the absolute perfect 
thing. But definitely you can sort of say, well, okay, I accept a bit of wobble here. But most of the time it's definitely looking better than it was with previous devices. So I hope you enjoyed this little look at the performance of the Garmin 4955 through the London Marathon course through Canary Wharf in London. Good luck to anyone who's running on Sunday and I'll be certainly watching with great interest. I'm going to do another video featuring a couple of YouTubers similar to the Berlin Marathon one I did last time with Nick Bester and Matt Fox. I just need to prepare a bit more stats for that one. So yeah, look forward to that one as well. So as I said, I hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe on that and see you in the next one then. Bye! Hi, Tony, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? What's the word? Old uh, club mate, Tony Lashworth from Victoria Park. <laughs> yeah. I just sort of try to GPS through the uh, that Canary Wharf section. It always cuts out there, man. Yeah, I'll just try it with this one. It's a better, supposedly better, but we'll see uh, if it's right. on that. Which way are you going? Um, I'm I going. Just, I, I'm just running, like, doing a big loop, right, of the island. Yeah, I'm, do, I'm doing W back, going a good bow back. Right. I'm I think this is where the. Yeah, anyway, good to see you. Yeah, I thought you'd done a bit now for um, obviously on the year before. Yeah, I think I'll do one next spring, I think. I think right. that's my plan. Yeah, I'm, see down, if, I'm down to do Brighton. See if I can get up to three. I'm getting a bit old for it now. But, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, down, I'm down to do Brighton next April. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I see how, I see how it goes in three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. luck. Right, Cheers. Cheers. Oh, good to see Tony Lashman.